CIA and Sahara Desert. When you come to think about it, it's hard to fathom that one of the most secretive agencies in the world would have something to do with one of the most barren landscapes in the world. To see the connection between the two, we'll have to go back in time to 1969. In that year, the United States government's Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, embarked on Project Magnet, an initiative aimed at mapping magnetic and gravitational anomalies in the northern region of the African continent. As part of this project, the CIA was tasked with conducting aerial reconnaissance of a peculiar geological formation in the Sahara Desert, known as the Richat structure. This structure is also called the Eye of Sahara. To this day, geologists are still debating what could have caused the formation of such a distinct pattern on the Earth's surface. However, the CIA claims that no anomaly was found on the ground and that such relief was naturally created. Despite this, the intelligence services are still withholding the results of the Rishat structure survey from the public, leaving many to question why this information has been classified. Some have suggested that the information was classified to avoid causing widespread panic, while others believe that the CIA may have discovered evidence of extraterrestrial activity or technology. The formation of this structure has perplexed experts for decades, with some theories suggesting that it could be a meteorite impact crater or the result of volcanic activity. The desert near the small town of Wadan in Mauritania was not considered remarkable by the people who wandered through it, as it was only filled with sand and stones. However, the main mystery of the area was accidentally discovered in 1965 during NASA's Gemini 4 space mission. It turned out that the Eye of Sahara was hiding in plain sight for millennia. When the American astronauts went into outer space for the first time in history, the ship's crew noticed strange circular patterns in the African desert from the portholes. These patterns were the first pictures of the Reichat structure, which intrigued many researchers. The Reichat structure has a diameter of a mind-boggling 50 kilometers and somewhat resembles Jupiter's great red spot. But unlike Jupiter, the structure is divided into clearly defined concentric rings. These are almost perfect circles of rocks and sandstone. Geological studies have shown that more ancient rocks are concentrated in the center of this anomaly, while younger sedimentary rocks are located in the outer rings and ridges. The oldest ring is estimated to be around 600 million years old. The locals consider this mark on the ground a divine manifestation, calling the structure the Eye of God. However, scientists and geologists are trying to understand how this miracle of nature was formed from a scientific point of view. There are three different hypotheses about the formation of the Richat structure. The first one is that the ring structure is an impact crater created by a meteorite that may have hit Earth many years ago. However, this hypothesis has a drawback, as the formation is almost completely flat, which is uncharacteristic of an impact crater. The site also lacks the minerals usually found in cases of shock metamorphism. That is where extreme heat and pressure from a high-velocity impact deform the surrounding rock. Believers of the second theory claimed that the Eye of the Sahara is the remains of an ancient volcano. Around 100 million years ago, there was the separation of Pangaea, a supercontinent that had previously united almost the entire land of Earth. In the process of tectonic shifts on the newly formed African continent, molten rock rose and formed a dome. Over the next millions of years, land surfaces were exposed to erosion, and as the dome subsided, circular ridges were left behind because different rock types inside it weathered at different speeds. However, this assumption can also be refuted, as no volcanic rocks were found there. Moreover, both versions did not even consider the interesting fact that 5,000 years ago, the Sahara Desert was underwater, which makes it even harder to believe considering the current arid environment. The third theory is the most extraordinary, and might even be considered as bizarre. It is believed that the Eye of the Sahara was once an alien-built airfield, and this theory is so fantastic that it was offered by ufologists. While this theory may seem insane to some, it is not as insane as the actions of the CIA regarding the research of the Richat structure. Half a century after the initial research on the structure, some previously classified CIA files on Project Magnet became available to the public. However, the report on the Eye of the Sahara anomalies consists of only one page, and some lines are just hidden. 
It makes one wonder, why is the CIA trying to hide information about this structure? Adding to the intrigue, the CIA also classified the book The Adam and Eve Story, written by their former employee, Chan Thomas. However, some people preserved its electronic copies, making it possible to learn that the book considers various exotic views on Earth's history, including the description of global floods. According to the book, one of these floods destroyed an entire city in the Sahara, which was surrounded by water at the time. The city was built in the form of rings extending outward, and the settlement was created by strong, warlike, and intelligent people. This city was called Atlantis. The Eye of Sahara is the location of the fabled Lost City of Atlantis. One of the most popular proponents of this theory is Jimmy Corsetti, a renowned researcher and YouTuber from Bright Insight. What do we know about the lost advanced civilization? Not that much. According to historical records, an Egyptian priest shared his knowledge about Atlantis with the Athenian poet Solon, who then told the ancient Greek philosopher Critias. Unfortunately, it was Critias's grandson, Plato, who recorded all the details in his writing. Plato is considered one of the most important and influential figures in the history of humankind, and he collected all the preserved facts about Atlantis in his treatise Timaeus, written in 360 BC. One of the best clues that Plato gives about Atlantis is this passage in his treatise. Poseidon carved the mountain where his love dwelt into a palace and enclosed it with three circular moats of increasing width, varying from one to three stadia and separated by rings of land proportional in size. The Atlanteans then built bridges northward from the mountain, making a route to the rest of the island. They dug a great canal to the sea, and alongside the bridges carved tunnels into the rings of rock so that ships could pass into the city around the mountain. They carved docks from the rock walls of the moats. Every passage to the city was guarded by gates and towers, and a wall surrounded each ring of the city. The problem with Plato's account is that he was only told about the last years of Atlantis's existence. He knew nothing about how the city was formed. This information is only preserved in myths and legends. According to one such myth, the Greek god of the sea, Poseidon, once came across Atlantis. He walked the world to find the biggest island and found exactly what he needed in Atlantis. It was here that he also found his true love, a girl named Cleto. Cleto was so beautiful that Poseidon was worried someone else would fall in love with her and steal her away. To prevent this from happening, Poseidon built a palace and enclosed it with three circular moats of increasing width. Poseidon and Cleto had ten children, and one of them was named Atlas. Atlas became the king of Atlantis, and the Atlantic Ocean was named after him. All the inhabitants of Atlantis were demigods, and there were no equals. While we may never know for sure if this lost city did exist, there are some striking coincidences between Plato's account of Atlantis and reality. According to Plato, the island on which Atlantis was located was enormous, similar in size to modern-day Iceland. The city itself was arranged in concentric rings with a holy temple dedicated to Poseidon and his love, Clato, at the center, surrounded by a wall made of gold. The Atlanteans were renowned for their ingenuity, and they used it to create a complex defense system that protected the settlement. They dug a great canal to the sea, and built bridges that led to different parts of the island, each passage guarded by gates and towers, making it virtually impossible for conquerors to attack the city. According to Plato, Atlantis was a self-sufficient city, growing its own food on fertile land and raising domesticated animals. Within the city walls, democracy ruled, and everyone had all the necessary benefits of a peaceful life. However, at some point, this was no longer enough, and the Atlanteans began to conquer other lands, including parts of Libya, Egypt, and modern-day Italy. But the Athenians fought back, liberating the people who had been enslaved by the Atlanteans. The battles were difficult, as the Atlanteans possessed great physical strength and extensive knowledge of science. However, in the end, the Athenians managed to win. Unfortunately, Zeus wasn't pleased with the Atlanteans' greed, so he decided to punish them by flooding the city along with its residents. While this story may seem like a pure myth, there may be some truth behind it. Chan Thomas's Adam and Eve story recounts what the Egyptian priests told Solon about the cataclysm that buried Atlantis. 
According to the text, winds and oceans swept over the surface, flooding everything around 11,000 years ago, and entire continents were covered with a water column of several kilometers. This lines up with the theory that a tsunami washed away Atlantis in an instant, as tsunamis in ancient times were much higher and more powerful than those we see today. The search for Atlantis has been hindered by the fact that the only clue provided by Plato is that it was located beyond the Pillars of Hercules, which refers to the Strait of Gibraltar. However, thanks to advancements in technology, researchers have been able to narrow down the list of potential locations to Antarctica, the Azores, the marshlands of the Donana National Park in southern Spain, and the Eye of the Sahara. What makes the Eye of the Sahara stand out is the fact that it is a circular structure divided into concentric rings, much like the description of Atlantis provided by Plato. Also, the size of the Eye of the Sahara matches the dimensions of Atlantis, which was said to stretch for 24 kilometers. Furthermore, there are remnants of salt in the area, suggesting that there was once ocean water there. Ancient marine creatures such as whales, fish, turtles, crocodiles, and manatees have also been discovered in the area. Skeptics cited Plato's texts that describe a utopian state as an island with the eye of the Sahara as just a small area on a massive continent. However, recent evidence suggests that the eye of the Sahara may have been an island around 7,000 years ago when all of northwest Africa was separated from the mainland by the ancient Tamanrasset River, which flowed from the Atlas Mountains through the present-day Sahara Desert to the sea in Mauritania. Elephant skeletons found in Mauritania further support the theory that the Sahara was once home to a thriving population of these animals, which were widespread in Atlantis. The fact that they are now entirely extinct in North Africa adds weight to the idea that a catastrophic event wiped out the inhabitants of this legendary city. In addition to the elephant skeletons, white, black, and red stones found in Wadi El Natrun near the Richat structures provide further evidence of Atlantis. According to Plato's treatise, Atlantis boasted houses made of the same stones, and the philosopher claimed that the city was rich in iron, copper, and gold. Today, Mauritania exports the exact same minerals, suggesting that the region was once home to a thriving civilization. Satellite images of the Richat structures also show evidence of a giant flood that may have destroyed the city. The places where the flood waters were rushing across the Sahara towards the sea are clearly visible, lending credence to the theory that Atlantis may have been wiped out by a massive wave. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence in favor of the idea that Atlantis was located in the Sahara is a map created by the Roman geographer Pomponius Mila, who lived 2,000 years ago. A closer look at the map reveals that on the western part of the Sahara, Pomponius wrote Atlante, which suggests that it was a city rather than mountains. This is because if it were mountains, the inscription would be above them, not next to them, and written in large letters like all the other cities. Not only that, evidence of a major settlement in the Richat structure has been proven by the discovery of thousands of artifacts, including arrowheads, spears, oars, ship hulls, and even something resembling a surfboard. These artifacts suggest that the people of Atlantis were surrounded by water and used these tools to their advantage. Interestingly, many of these artifacts have been found in the outermost depressions of the structure and are absent in the innermost ones. This aligns with Plato's description of outside the city walls, where there were barracks with spearmen aimed to defend the settlement's security. In the late 20th century, scientists analyzed the DNA of over 30 skeletons found in the prehistoric site of Tafraut. The DNA of the ancient humans was only slightly similar to that of modern-day hunter-gatherers from the Hadza tribe in East Africa. But the DNA of the remains from Tafraut is not 100% identical to any existing human populations. This means that the remains could belong to people who used to live on the mainland, but then disappeared, such as the Atlanteans. The traces of the Atlanteans are found in different parts of Africa, and some researchers even believe that the Egyptian pyramids are related to them. Legends say that the alchemists and mathematicians of Atlantis developed a formula to store cosmic energy in a crystal. For that, it had to be placed at the top of a pyramid. The Atlanteans allegedly believed that with the help of this energy, it was possible to cure all kinds of diseases and to live up to 800 years. 
Some researchers believe that the Atlanteans were those who helped the Egyptians build the pyramids. In ancient Egypt, it is believed that the Egyptians are descended from the 12 great gods of Atlantis, which had just as many gods, including Poseidon, Plato, and their 10 sons. Furthermore, if we believe the legends, this civilization could have been not entirely human. Legends say that the Atlanteans could grow up to six meters and had six fingers on each of their hands. Presumably their facial features also differed from other nations. They had wide lips, a slightly flattened nose, and huge expressive eyes. While the Rishat structure may not be 100% confirmed as the ruins of Atlantis, it remains one of the most mysterious anomalies on the planet that has attracted considerable attention from researchers for many years. If you'd like to know more about other amazing discoveries, watch this next video.